Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias of Mike. Uh, guys, we're almost at the era where I actually started wrestling, started watching wrestling live. Um, this, we're at WrestleMania 8. We're in the Hoosier Dome, Indianapolis, Indiana. This is actually the first WrestleMania that I saw after I started watching wrestling. Uh, I didn't see this WrestleMania live. I saw it when it came out on VHS. If you don't know what VHSs are, um, let's see. This is a VHS. The, the, the I mean, this one's blank. It probably has wrestling on it or porn or something. I don't know. It has something on it. It's probably wrestling. But this was the first WrestleMania that I saw on VHS. So... Ooh, it, it it's a good one too. It's a really really good one. Um, I didn't get to talk about uh the performances for America the Beautiful in WrestleMania Seven. I forgot about it. Completely forgot. Willie Nelson came out and sang American Beautiful. It was fantastic. Slightly better than this than this WrestleMania's version. It was Reba McIntyre, who did a perfectly fine job. I just like the dulcet tones of Willie Nelson better. And who doesn't really in this day and age? But um, <laughs> but anyway, guys, we have reached that point where the pay-per-view companies have cracked down WWE and WrestleMania is under three hours. Oh, I, as an avid watcher of Monday Night Raw, you know any show that tends to be over three hours can drag a little bit. This is the first WrestleMania Super tight, very condensed, two hours, 40-something minutes. We got nine matches. It was really, really good. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, Not the first time he'll do this. Not the last time he's done this. Mr. WrestleMania opens the show, Shawn Michaels, with Sensational Sherry singing his theme song. Very important, very amazing. I love that version of his song. I love that they even brought back when Shawn Michaels feud of Kurt Angle at a way later WrestleMania that I'll get to. And uh, Shawn Michaels going to get up against El Matador Tito Santana. Ah, oh, really good match. I mean, Tito Santana, he's been at every WrestleMania so far. One of very few guys, I think, right now, as it stands, Hogan, Bret Hart, and maybe Roddy Piper. I think that's it. I think that's the list right now who have been at every WrestleMania so far. I mean, excluding managers, you know, Jimmy, Bobby, they're in everything. But um, actually, maybe Ted DiBiase has been in all of them too. I think he has been. Yeah. Yeah, he has been. So we got about five. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. So I think Jake missed the first couple. But yeah, Roddy was at the first one. Uh, Tito was at the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, man. But Shawn Michaels and Santana. Fantastic match. Um, Shawn gets it, gets his first big singles WrestleMania win. Very important. Um, as you know, he'll go on to have a, quite a few more of those wins. But yeah, it was really fun. Um the second match on the card, remember, he's still not a thing yet. Like, not a huge thing. The Undertaker. Ah, going up against one of my all-time favorites, Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake cuts a promo before this, talking to the Undertaker. If you've never heard Jake Roberts cut promos, you need to watch this promo. He's so good. One of my favorite things about Jake is that he never raised his voice in his promos. He was always just very slow and methodical in the way that he spoke. Kind of like his matches, if you think about it. Like, his matches and his promo style are very similar. But, um, yeah, spoiler alert, The Undertaker wins. Shocking. It's almost like he's developing some kind of win streak at WrestleMania. Um, I'm sure that'll amount to nothing. Uh, the next match, we got the Intercontinental title match. Now, this was one of the matches I remembered happening basically for the finish. Uh, it's Bret Hart going up against his good friend, Rowdy Roddy Piper. 
watch watch this match. If you haven't seen this match, what the fuck are you doing? Watch this match. It's really, really good. Uh, Bret Hart gets busted open in the middle of the match. Makes it look even better. It's almost like Bret might use that in a future WrestleMania to help get someone else over. No, I'm sure that'll never happen. Um, but yeah, Piper has a sleeper on. Bret Hart reverses it, flips over, gets the pin. Really good. Really, really good match. And the next match, we need a little bit of a power cleanser from that technical stuff. Eight-man tag. It's basically a huge gimmick match. You got the big boss man, Virgil, complete with his uh, handsome Rusev-esque face mask. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter and Hacksaw Jim Duggan against the Nasty Boys, Repo Man, and the Mountie. Uh, <laughs> the promo before this match is phenomenal. None of these guys are ama- amazing at promos, but they're all really, really good character guys. So yeah, you gotta watch the promo, you gotta watch the match. The The faces get the win, as you would expect. Uh, but yeah, it was really good. Next up, I believe this is a WrestleMania first. Sadly, um, one half of our double main event, the first time the WWF Championship does not main event WrestleMania. Yeah, we got the real world's champion, Ric Flair. Remember, 1992, y'all, the first Royal Rumble that counted just happened. He's going up against my man, the Macho Man Randy Savage here. Yeah. And uh, the, the whole backstory, because I remember being a little kid and not knowing what was going on with this backstory, because it's very adult. I knew something was up with it. I knew it was something very personal. I had no idea what it meant, though. Keep in mind, 1992, I was about nine, eight or nine. So, you know, it's a little mad, Mike. Uh, But Ric Flair was basically saying that he banged Liz. I never quite got if he banged Liz before she was with Macho or during their time apart or currently. I never really understood where that dichotomy was. I assumed it was when Macho was with Sherry. That's what I kind of figured, but who knows? They were never really too clear about it. But um, it's a great match. Really, really good. Longest match on the card by far. Um, one of the first really good Ric Flair matches, like singles matches in WWE, I think. Uh, yeah, and Savage gets the win by cheating, holding the tights. He outwitted the dirtiest player in the game, which is great. They also have um, post-match interviews with both Ric Flair and Randy Savage. It's perfect. By the way, anytime you can watch a Ric Flair match at this point with Bobby Heenan on commentary, it's worth your time because Bobby Heenan sells Ric Flair like he's God's gift, and it's great. Uh, So after the post-match interviews, we're treated to the Lumby Indians doing a dance because they're, they're close to... Tatanka's hometown, and Tatanka's in the next match against the model Rick Martel. Uh, very quick match. I, you know, from the, you know, t- the thing about the Tatanka and Tio Santana matches, there's always a little bit of racism. <laughs> it's very odd. It's it's a little uncomfortable at this point, but you know, it it was it was the early '90s, I guess. A lot of things were different. But uh, yeah, Tatanka gets the win over Rick Martel. And uh, now we move on to something that I thought we'd be done with at this point. I thought we'd be done with, but I guess we're not. Bullshit finishes at WrestleMania. Bullshit finishes. Uh, We have a tag team championship match. The Natural Disasters against Money Incorporated, Ted DiBiase and IRS. And of course... The disasters or earthquake and typhoon. A uh, really fun match. It shows how smart DiBiase and IRS were. But you know, when it looks like they're about to get the earthquake, Jimmy Hart pulls out IRS and they take a walk, and it's a countout win for the natural disasters. 
Also, I forgot to mention this. Um, this WrestleMania also saw the return of Paul Ellering to, man- to help manage the Legion of Doom. And I believe they go on to SummerSlam 92. Uh, that's when they ride out the Gold Choppers in Wembley, which that match is amazing. The entrance is amazing. Just find that entrance if you've never seen it before. The entrance is worth your time alone. Uh, but yeah, the Legion of Doom came out. They said they want whoever was tag champs. Makes sense. So moving on, uh, <laughs> when we came back, there was music going on that I didn't recognize. And I've heard a lot of wrestling music before. The Rocket Owen Hart. Yeah, the Rocket Owen Hart had horrible entrance music. And I think we missed the first part of this match. Um, he was going up against Skinner. I believe Skinner spit some of his uh, crocodile or alligator chaw into Owen Hart's face, capitalizing on the beginning of the match. But it's very, very quick. It's a palate cleanser. We need to get to Hogan immediately. So uh, Owen Hart beats Skinner with a nice little roll-up. So good for Owen Hart. Uh, it's also the first time, I think, that both Hart brothers win at WrestleMania. Nice to see. Oh, and also very important. Uh, when Macho Man beat Ric Flair, I believe. Now, if I I wasn't exactly paying attention. Like, I didn't recall seeing this before. But I think this is the first time that there was pyro at a WrestleMania. Because there was pyro when Macho Man won. I don't remember seeing it in 7. I don't remember seeing it in 6. I don't think it would have existed before that. So, uh, yeah. It, that that might be a cool trivia question. Who's the first person to get pyro at WrestleMania? Macho Man. And now we move to the main event. Um, <laughs> now, uh, the the weird thing about this whole show is... They've been asking the entire time, is this Hulk Hogan's last match? I completely forgot about this story. Um, Now, the real reason is because this was when the whole steroid stuff was going down with WDF. But it made for kind of a cool story because if you think about WrestleMania 9 and you remember WrestleMania 9, Hulk Hogan, not a huge part. And when we get to WrestleMania 9, I'm going to do a whole... Break down Hulk Hogan's WrestleMania history because it'll be the last time we see him for a very long time. Um, but yeah, Hulk Hogan, Sid Justice, <sighs> the, the, this this match is a shit show. It really is. Uh, it's not the best Hogan match by far. Uh, there, there are some cool spots in it, but it's the first WrestleMania main event to end their disqualification. So I guess that's a first. Uh, but Hogan beat Sid. They call for the bell early. I get I Papa Shango runs out. They double team Hogan. Then you get the return of the Ultimate Warrior, which admittedly is very cool. I wasn't really a warrior guy, but still the moment is there. And there's actually Hulk, there's a cool moment after, you know, the faces run the heels off. Hogan reaches out and sees a sign in the crowd says, Bring back the warrior. And he actually has that fan pass the sign up and they hold it up. It's really cool. But uh, yeah, Hogan and Warrior celebrating together at the end of WrestleMania 8. This is kind of... it. This is kind of the end of the Hulk Hogan era, WrestleMania. Some will argue it's 9. I'm going to say it's here. I'm going to say it's here because... This WrestleMania feels like a, a turning point. Like you see an entrance ramp, like you see an entrance stage. They have the little neon WWF sign. And of course, WrestleMania 9, they go all out with the entrances. They go all the fuck out. Um, but yeah, I think this is a turning point. I think this is really when WWF started to change over into the new generation, as it were. Um, also, I forgot one other thing. <laughs> this is around the time when WWF, in the midst of a steroid, steroid scandal, is promoting the World Bodybuilding Federation. Probably not the best idea in the world, but we have a talk with a guy who will become important later. Lex Luger, the narcissist. Uh, <laughs> and Bobby Heenan does his best to put the narcissist over, talking to a pre-programmed video, where Lex Luger drinks milk. 
or Ico Pro. I'm not sure which one it was. But yeah. Uh, so I think that's it for WrestleMania 8. We will be back to talk WrestleMania 9. WrestleMania 9, forewarning you, admittedly, one of my favorite WrestleManias. Not because it's a great WrestleMania. It's the first one I, you know, well, I'll get to that later. But um, if you have, if you like these videos, please comment on the YouTube feed. Hit me up on the Twitters at MadMike483. Uh, hit us up on Facebook, on, on Twitter at Mayhem Show. You know, just type in Wrestling Mayhem Show, see what comes up. Find me. Let me know if you like these videos. Let me know if you don't like these videos. And if you don't like these videos, you're at 8. You might as well keep watching the rest of them. All right. So, for Mad Mike, I'm Mad Mike, and we'll see you at WrestleMania.